looking to make an impact for your promotion, business, or gimmick to the pro wrestling community on the only 24-hour online pro wrestling radio station, let Pro Wrestling 24-7 make you a main event. PW 24-7 has space available for your company to advertise around the world with our global fan base and loyal wrestling fans from New Zealand to California. Your commercial spot will be heard worldwide. With our competitive rates, you can have our personalities from around the wrestling industry advertising your business on PW 24-7. PW 24-7 also has web banner advertising and sponsorships to make your sponsorship a success. For more information, contact nick.anthony at pw247radio.com. PW247 Wrestling Radio, Evolved. Pro Wrestling 24-7 News on the Hour, Within the Hour, and When It Breaks, where legends and fans come together. PW247radio.com. I'm Nathan Lane. Now, according to the Connecticut Post, Linda McMahon will officially announce her plans to run for the United States Senate September 20th. That's next Tuesday. In other news, WWE will be having a short Raw tour in Japan on November 30th and December 1st. Also, WWE have applied to register a trademark for WWE Network. Well, the WWE SmackDown taping in Dallas, Texas for October 11th is advertising John Cena and Alberto Del Rio. This is the day before the Raw brand begins their Mexican tour. In other news, former WWE and TNA star Matt Hardy claimed that he was framed. Quote, for the first time in my life, I was framed, Hardy wrote on his Twitter page on Monday of this week. A zero, zero, and zero. I'm truly appalled, he says. This will not go down without a fight. I've got a bullseye on my head. Hardy didn't say what, in fact, he is referring to, but we have learned from our friends at ProWrestling.net that Hardy has been arrested again for DWI. That confirmed with police officials in Moore County, North Carolina. In other news, WWE Hall of Famer Roddy Piper stated on his Twitter page that he underwent successful neck surgery on Monday. He stated that the surgery took six and a half hours and he is scheduled to be hospitalized for 10 days. Quote, when I can walk better, going to the kids cancer ward. Piper noted, bravest people in the world. Meanwhile, WWE star Triple H was asked in a Miami Herald interview whether SmackDown could move to Tuesday nights. Quote, I'm sure if you ask Sci-Fi, they would say, yes, Triple H said. Quote, I think that's entirely on the board. The beautiful thing about WWE is we truly are a fluid product because we're live and we can do it from just about anywhere. We can move things around and switch things around, he continues, and it's what makes us such a valuable partner to people and networks like USA and Sci-Fi. Well, the news has been brought to you by the Cold Pepper Pond Brokers. Audio, TV, stereo tools, musical instruments, buy estates, cash for anything of value, including gold, boats, ATVs, buy and sell pond. Cold Pepper Pond Brokers in Cold Pepper, Virginia. Call them now, 540-829-7296. That's 540-829-7296. So you're up to date on the latest professional wrestling news here on the first professional wrestling radio station from coast to coast and around the world on PW247Radio.com. I'm Nathan Lane. Wrestling Radio, Evolve. Whether it be WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor, the independent circuit, or anything in between, myself, Mike the Kid, and Stan Grubb have got it for you. So tune in to PW247 Radio every Sunday night at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific, as we invite you to come with us, step between the ropes, and enter this very ring. Hey. Hey, you. Yeah. Yeah, you. 10 p.m. Eastern, Friday nights. PW247Radio.com. Tweet talking. The British bomber, Matt Denton. Your favorite professional wrestler and your Italian hero, Joey Image. Again, every Friday night, PW247Radio.com. Tweet talking. Miss it, I kick your ass. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy! Wake up, little Jimmy, wake up. Wake up, 
Little Jimmy, wake up. We've both been sound asleep. Wake up, little Jimmy, and weep. Raw is over, it's 8 o'clock, and troops got big time heat. Wake up, little Jimmy. Wake up, little Jimmy. Well, what we gonna tell the others? What we gonna tell them, son? What you gonna tell your friends when they say, Cena sucks! Wake up, little Jimmy. Wake up, little Jimmy. Well, I told you, boy, our truth was changing his way. Well, Jimmy, my son, looks like truth got screwed again. Wake up, little Jimmy. Wake up, little Jimmy. He got okie doke. Yeah. Wake up, little Jimmy. Wake up. Wake up, little Jimmy. Wake up. Raw wasn't so hot. Seen I got a huge pop. Well, I fell asleep less than halfway through, and I still know Raw's plot. Wake up, little Jimmy. Wake up, little Jimmy. Well, what are we gonna tell the others? What are we gonna tell them, son? What are we gonna tell your friends when they say, Cena sucks! Wake up, little Jimmy. Wake up, little Jimmy. Nick Anthony, Aaron Kendrick, Bad Blood, Tuesday, 6 p.m. Pacific on PW24. Oh, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. for a cheerful toast and fill it, happy anniversary, but be careful you don't spill it, happy anniversary, oh. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, Right. It is Wednesday, the 21st September, and that means you are listening live to the first anniversary show of Shoot Finish here on PW247Radio.com. Uh, everybody's been saying happy, happy anniversary left and right. Of course, even the Flintstones just gave us a rendition of happy anniversary, thanks to our wonderful board op, Joy Image. Joy, how you doing this week? I am doing good, man. Real busy week, but otherwise everything's going good. Yeah, I'm so busy that uh, you went out last night with, with our, you know, co-anchor of the show, and she's so tired of she's not here. <laughs> uh, no comment, uh, I guess is all yeah, I can say yeah. to that. Yeah, well, you know, but that's okay, because as a special treat, we have managed to convince him to come back after four-month hiatus, after he got a little bit, uh, I guess the word is upset, at the industry in general and the way things were going down. But ladies and gentlemen, the master of malice, Mark James. What's up, everybody? And now you got to get that straight, okay? It wasn't the industry in general. It was the spoilers in the industry, the lack of good wrestling on television, and the fans um, not... Well, just taking for granted what guys like myself and Joey and Wicked and, and everybody else out there puts on the line every single night and not giving a damn. So that that's what pissed me off. But either way, that was in the past. This is now the present. This is a one-year anniversary, and I'm happy to be here, and I appreciate you guys having me back on. Well, of course, because, you know, it, it only makes sense to have you here. It wouldn't be right without you. But we're also joined... Of course, by the person who filled in your shoes on such a quick notice and then has stuck around ever since. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Wicked Nemesis. So does that make me, does that mean that Mark James left uh, gonorrhea or something here? Is that what it is? 
Stop. Or a good STD? That's horrible. No, I, he, he left something here. Yeah. his shoes. Are you kidding me? The man walks three inches above the ground. I could never in my life fill in his shoes, ever. No, I mean, you could try to fill them in. You know, maybe you put some paper in there, then put your shoes. No, it doesn't really matter. Well, I was size 15 also, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, there is that. But, uh, I mean, did you do anything exciting this week, Nemesis? Uh, I noticed that uh, the pay-per-view was a horrible pay-per-view. Uh, Midnight Wrestling, we went through, God, how much? 44 minutes. 44 minutes for us to go through the entire pay-per-view. I mean, out. Raw. I'm sorry. 44 minutes to go through Raw. I apologize. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like, uh, yeah, there's a little bit more on that on the pay-per-view, but hey. But um, it, actually, it took you guys longer to talk about it than there was wrestling on the show. It's amazing. There were only four matches on Raw. Four. Yeah, well, I mean... That's better than sometimes you know, we, we've seen from both companies, WWE and TNA, where you're lucky if you get two or three in an hour and then get one match that actually lasts a decent amount of time, and then that's it for the rest of the show. Everything else is talking, which is pretty much you know, describes what we had on Monday. But um, I don't know. It's, now, for all those people in the chat room, by the way, who are listening, and I, I know that, that they're waiting for people to call in. Yes, we will be talking about the Territory League. Yes, we will be hearing from people in the Territory League. It, it's coming. Don't worry about it. We're just, you know, chatting because Mark hasn't been here in a while. So we need to get him up, up to speed and he can tell us what he's been thinking about TNA and WWE lately. So, Mark, <laughs> just, just off what? the cuff. Well, off hold on. Cuff. I don't, Renegade, I don't think they're going to be rioting just because we talked to the man, Mark James. I mean, this man is this man is money. I mean, who makes more money than, than Mark James? God, and that's about it. <laughs> Everyone. God, <laughs> Everyone God Charlie Sheen. <laughs> Charlie Sheen is great. Wow. But no, Mark. I mean, uh, have you been paying attention to TNA since we we talked to you last? In, in all honesty, I have not watched one episode of TNA, and my life has been much happier because of it. And it gives you a Thursday night to do stuff with. It, it really does. It gives me a nice open Thursday night, and I can I can relax and, and uh, enjoy my night and hang out. And, and actually, well, yeah, well, when when it starts back up tomorrow night, I can watch Grey's Anatomy because that's much more important and much more entertaining than anything they got going on in TNA. And it's the same, too. Like I said, I've, I've always said I'm a TNA supporter. I always have been. I've got so many friends there. It's just, it's so bad right now. I, I refuse to watch it because it just pisses me off every show. Yeah, I mean, it, it's understandable, and uh, just because I watched because of the whole Sting versus Flair thing last week, you know, I, I watched it just to watch, and, and, and it scares me that when I look on Twitter and I see people talking about that match, and what they say is not that it was a good match. Not that it was, you know, help, made them remember the glory days of WCW. Not anything else, but the, the overwhelming majority of people were saying, eh, that wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I mean, can you imagine ever of hearing about a Ric Flair sting match and everybody, the you know, general consensus is, that's better than I thought it would be? Well, because nobody expects anything out of, well, out of Flair at least. Sting is still an active performer. He's still around, and and not that people expect a lot out of him, but at least out of Flair, you know, he's old now and and botching spots left and right for you know a couple of years and everything else. And I, I don't know what made him think it was okay not to wear a shirt this time during this match, considering the last time that they wrestled each other, he did. Um, I wish he would have had the same thought process uh, this time, but. It is what it is. It's still a, a interesting match, and uh, it was still there for the nostalgia, I guess, and, and uh, TNA's waste of time that they could have been using to put young talent over. So, Yeah, exactly. And especially since it looks like all, all of their work, as far at least as far as kayfabe is going, is down the drain with Hogan announcing that, well, he's done. He's not going to do anything more. He's retiring next week. It makes the whole thing seem like a waste, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, well, I guess he's going to focus on that uh, that midget championship wrestling draft uh, that's on Wednesday. 
Yeah, yeah that, that, the thing that is on up, up against our show, and I guarantee you that we have more listeners now than they have viewers. Uh, well, depending on, on uh, what they had last week, they had 99,000 viewers? Something like yeah, that. They something. But I tell you, especially with half pint brawlers wanting to sue Ho- Hogan's pants off because of stealing their concept. It's the same <laughs> deal. Yeah, it's the same thing. Art. It, it not even, not even that it's the same thing. The whole show is a work. From start to finish, it's a work. And I, I'm used to wrestling being a work, but and I'm used to reality shows being a work, especially on true TV. <laughs> but this whole thing is a work. All right, Chris, the frat boy, it was Roger Strong. Period. Roger Strong. Yeah. His name is not Chris. Hey, did anybody else catch that, or was it just me? No, I noticed it right away. <laughs> I, yeah. As soon as I saw yeah. him, I knew. As soon as I saw him, I knew the rest of it was bolt. Uh, was crap. <laughs> this whole censoring thing is going to be hard for all of us guys. It's but, fecal uh, excrement. <laughs> <laughs> Mark James. It. Mark yeah, James. It. That of a bull. <laughs> <laughs> ah, man, you are some, you know, coming up with euphemism, euphemism you know, Samuel L. Jackson's. Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, instead of oh. MF, it's it's SLJ. I don't even say Samuel Jackson, I just say SLJ. Yeah, I just wanted to get a full one out, so when people see us type SLJ in the future in Twitter, they will understand. Because I'm thinking a lot of people are looking, SLJ, what the heck is SLJ? <laughs> I knew immediately. I'm pretty sure Mark knew immediately, too. Yeah. Joey, you, you knew immediately, right? I had no idea, but I saw it. <laughs> I saw the SLJ, like, hashtag. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> it means he's tired of the SLJ snakes and the SLJ plane. <laughs> right, I hear you. Well, as I said, my inner monologue is actually narrated by Samuel Jackson, so... Yeah, we went over that all last week. You, you have Samuel L. Jackson. I just hear people's voices. Or it's just regular voices. I'm not sure which. But no, that's um, schizophrenia. Totally different. Yeah. Oh, and, and just looking at what people are talking about in our chat room, and just bringing this up, the Hulk Hogan, Microchampionship Wrestling... Hogan said something earlier today. I mean, asked a question. I don't know if it was earlier today or late last night. <laughs> asking, who is Bruce Campbell? <laughs> I didn't see that many people mention that. And then I, I retweeted it, and I put comments before it so people would see it. And I put, is this a, a real question? And I never got uh, an answer. Well, not from him, at least. So, I mean, I knew I wouldn't get an answer from him because he hates me anyway. But I... um. I thought that was kind of funny. And a lot of people were like, I, ho- I hope that's not a real question. Yeah. I, it sure looked you know, real because, well, he never answered either on Facebook or on Twitter if it was a real question or not. But I, I saw a bunch of people, at least on my timeline, really getting on him going, you know, you just lost major cool points, Hulk. He's like, <laughs> how, could you, how could you not know who Bruce Campbell is? Right. It's just one of those things. Now, is is this Stan Grubb joining us on the phone? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's me. Hi, Mark. Hey, what's up, Stan? How's it going, man? Hey. Oh, sorry. I didn't know which Mark you were talking to. I, I couldn't no. I couldn't let the one-year anniversary go by where the return of Mark James, even if it is for one night only, I couldn't let it go by without saying hey to the Master of Malice. And, and because it is the one-year anniversary... I thought that most especially Wicked Nemesis, Joey, Joey Image, Mark, James, of course, and, and of course Greg, you know, I can't forget Greg, would, would like to know that I had a piece of information that I had to pass along to you guys. Because it is the one-year anniversary of Shoot Finish, and I just wouldn't be right to, to not go full tilt, full bore, and say that I got permission for you guys, because I love you guys just this much, that... I, I can't let you do the SLJ and Mark James and all that stuff tonight. I mean, it's your anniversary, for fuck's sake. I mean, for crying out loud. I am so. So, it, I'm telling you that if you guys say SLJ tonight, your one-year one anniversary, then I'm, I'm going to tell everybody to turn the show off. 
Well, well, SLG well, to you, buddy. God for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck! This is amazing. We just became a bunch. Oh no. Here's my thing. As soon as I heard about it the other day, I was like, "All right, seriously, you guys are gonna do this bullshit right before I fucking call back in?" Uh, with me calling it, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? Mark, you don't know how hard it is every week to try to like cut down on the f bombs, and um, and then and then every time I I, I want to say it, I look over my Italian flag, and I'm like, man, I was raised on the word fuck. How the hell am I gonna do this? Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry. I'm Italian from Jersey, former Marine. It's just my nature. I can't freaking help it, and it comes out. And uh, yeah, anyway, so ah, I feel better now. Thank you, Stan. Appreciate that. Hey, far, far be it for me to, to not allow the fans to enjoy shoot finish in all its uh, uh, obscenity filled glory. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, guys, have a great show. Happy anniversary. I don't want to take up the show's time. I just wanted to pass that along. But uh, yeah, have a great one. And uh, I'm sure I'll see you in the chat room. Well, Stan, just to let you know, the chat room is now giving you a standing ovation for this call. <laughs> I love him right back. <laughs> All right, Stan. Thank you for calling, brother. Thanks for the well wishes. No problem. Have a great show. Happy anniversary. Shoot, finish. Yay. Thank you, sir. All right. Well, look at that. Stan Grub calls in, gives us permission to, to to like ignore the fact that we're trying to be nice guys. Oh, I love this. Aren't you happy about that, Wicked Nemesis? No, I think I'm still going to keep it PG-13. I need to get in that mode, or I'll start dropping them every day. Oh, or Christ. every show anyways, I'm sorry. I was going to say, you don't drop them every day anyway. Fuck. Yes, oh oh God, yes I do. My wife gets on me so much about cussing, it's unbelievable. Even my three-year-old said, that's bad word. Bad word, Papa. But, you know, like I said, it, I, I have to keep it, because if not, I will drop him. You should have said, Monday night, Monday night, Joey, how hard was it not to not to cuss? Oh, my oh God, my especially God. especially with the, with the subject matter we were talking about. It was really hard not yes. just to say, fuck this show. But, you know, we, we managed to somehow get through it. Okay, guys, talk amongst yourselves for a second. I got somebody on the phone who wants to talk to me. <laughs> Come on, you guys can talk on the show. Well, we got two I, minutes I before that. break, so. This, this is what I love. All right, I finally figured out, because I don't have my computer tonight, so yeah. you've got all these guests in the chat room. And guests, feel free to log in. You know, don't be scared. We're, we're not going to flame you too bad unless you're a complete jackass. Yo, like they, don't even, they, they don't even have to log in with the new chat. They just have to make up any screen name. I mean, you don't even have to log in. Yeah, yeah just make up a name. But, like, the one jackass is asking who we are and what do we know and all oh, that that's, stuff. Obviously, you've never listened to the show before. No, that guy has. If, it, if that's the same guy, then that's that guy always comes in here and causes trouble. And his name is always Guest432, and he just talks a bunch of shit and then leaves. So he, we, we've got, we've grown to ignore him. Oh. Wicked is a huge fan of that guy. What? Is that the same guest four thirty two that I that I heard about like forever in a day ago? I have no, <gasps> I have no idea, but I imagine it is. What happened? What did I miss out on? Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. What did I miss out <laughs> on in the chat room? There was a guest four thirty two in the chat room. I don't know if it's the guest four thirty two or just somebody screwing around, just asking a bunch of stupid what, shit. What did they say? Who's Samuel who, Jackson? Who, are these guys and who are you guys? <laughs> How, what do you know? Oh, he's still he's still here. Oh, he's there. He's still here. Yeah, but yes. okay, oh, guys. Quit. Oh no, he's sorry not here. about that, guys. I actually had to take that phone call because it actually is one of our guests calling me to to re remind him of the phone number. Okay. So it was kind of an important thing. I had to actually get off of you know talking on the air. <laughs> To tell him the phone number so he can come in and talk to us on the air. Okay. So. Whoa. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> anyway. Sam then changed his name to guess 432, so now we're never going to know who the hell these guys are. Yeah, and, so uh, anyway. Oh my God. What's all these Google Plus ads today? Jesus, people are driving me insane. I don't know. Sorry. Okay, and then, uh, <sighs> sorry, guess uh, 4002, I guess. Uh, guess underscore 4002. The reason yeah. I haven't been on in a while, honestly, I've been uh, I've been pretty busy and I've had a lot of stuff going on in my personal life. But uh, uh, on the other hand, I've, I've had some issues that I've had to work through um, as far as my uh, what I want to share with fans, basically. And I'm I'm big on trying to keep kayfabe as much as possible, 
And uh, it seems that a lot of fans take advantage of the fact that, uh, that you know, you have shows like this and they think they know more than what they do and it kind of annoys me at times. So I, I just needed to kind of take a break and get away for a while so I didn't uh, kill every fan that I knew around the wrestling business. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, Mark, it's, it's time for us to take our, our, our first break. And, and since you haven't done it in a long time, why don't you take us out to break? No, because I'm going to screw it up, like, really bad. So you, you go ahead, I'll get the next one. Ah, oh, but that's what, <laughs> that's what I wanted to have fun. Well, in that case, we'll be back in just a couple minutes. We've already got somebody on the line. We've got somebody else who's going to be calling on the line after the break. So um, definitely stay tuned. Call your friends, especially if you're a fan of the Territory League. They're going to want to be in here in about five to seven minutes' time. Somebody they want to hear. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. You're listening to Shoot Fit. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. For a cheerful toast and fill it, happy anniversary. But be careful you don't spill it, happy anniversary. Oh, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Hey everyone, Daniel Korea here. And what are you doing on Tuesday night, say around 8 p.m. Pacific time? If you're not busy, you might as well check out my show, Gorilla Position. Every week, I will bring you the results from Raw, SmackDown, and Impact Wrestling. I'll even play a little bit of audio so you can hear for yourself what happened on the shows. So be sure you keep it locked on PW247Radio.com where you can hear me on the Gorilla Position every Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Pacific time. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention for just a moment. Here on PW247 Radio, we have always said that actions speak louder than words. That being said... Show your support for your favorite independent promotion with your money by purchasing their internet pay-per-views. To do so, refer to the link to Go Fight Live at the lower right side of this page for any and all internet pay-per-view purchases. Thank you. Every Sunday night at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific, join myself, Mike the Kid, and Stan Grubb as we walk through the curtain, run down the ramp, climb to the top rope, and make a splash in this very ring. Only on PW247 Radio. Wrestling Radio Evolve. Hola, como esta, amigos? Tu bueno? Good. Me llamo es Nicolás. Nicolás Etre. Well, I just read that, Aaron, your fine state of Arkansas ranks number nine in obesity in the great country of the U.S. of A. So, I have decided to make this brief workout audio clip inspiring the fine country folk from Little Rock to Star City, Arkansas. Elton John, if you would, please. Thank you, sir. Now, everyone, Arkansas, put those heads up, put those arms up, raise the roof on one, and two, and one, and two, and your legs down. One, two, three, kick. One, two, three, kick. One, two, three, kick. Very good. Muy bueno, amigos. Fantastico. Minimize the maximum and turn that frown upside down. And while the great folks of Arkansas continue their routine, allow me to tell you guys about Bad Blood. It's her Tuesdays at 6 Pacific, 9 Eastern on this here wonder box of yours at PW247Radio.com. It's a wonderful thing, ain't it? Anywho, Aaron, Daniel, and myself, yours truly, Nick Anthony, will certainly have something to say on the topics that get pushed to the back burner. We talk TNA and the WWE, what's really on our mind. It's an opinionated wrestling talk program that targets even the favorites. The favorites, it's like uh, uh, no child left behind. God, I, I don't know. I don't get the reference, but it sounds good anyway. Babylon, 6 Pacific, 9 Eastern, PW247Radio.com, and now. Back to Arkansas. What? Looking to make an impact for your promotion, business, or gimmick to the pro wrestling community on the only 24-hour online pro wrestling radio station? Let Pro Wrestling 24-7 make you a main event. PW 24-7 has space available for your company to advertise around the world with our global fan base and loyal wrestling fans from New Zealand to California. Your commercial spot will be heard worldwide. With our competitive rates, you can have our personalities from around the wrestling industry advertising your business on PW 24-7. PW 24-7 also has web banner advertising and sponsorships to make your sponsorship a success. For more information, contact nick.anthony at pw247radio.com. PW247 Wrestling Radio Evolved.
right, we are back from that uh, short little break. And because he was upset that we didn't introduce him before the break, I'm going to do it now. Ladies and gentlemen, we're joined on the line by none other than the person who likes to kick people from our chat room. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Matt Denton. Hello, I'm calling for uh, Glenn. Glenn? Yes. Yeah, I'm calling for Glenn. <laughs> That's me. This is Glenn. This is this is gorgeous Glenn. Yes, gorgeous that, Glenn. That's me. Well, yeah, that's me. well, I, I'm I'm letting you know you are speaking right now to Grandmaster Sexay, former WWE World Tag Team Champion Brian Christopher. What's going on, Oos? Oh, see, we were wondering with that phone number who exactly it was calling in, and now we know. <laughs> now you know. Oh, so you were kayfaving me. You weren't going to. Okay, I see. You. <laughs> when I called you Oos, then you knew it was good people, right? Exactly. <laughs> well, what we I wanted it. to do is, <laughs> and what I want to do is I wanted to call in to shoot radio here and tell you guys, you know, I appreciate you guys pushing the Territory League. This is one of the hottest things going in professional wrestling today, and uh, you can you can be sh assured that I am putting together right now a team out of Memphis. I ain't got a name yet. I don't know if we're going to be the Memphis, Memphis Mafia. We might be the Memphis Maulers, but I'm assembling a team right there that is going to come into California and blow you people's minds. Yeah. Amazing. You know, and it's funny, one of the people on here, you know, Mark James is a wrestler down south. He actually, when you called in and he learned your voice, he thought you were George South for a second. <laughs> now, hold on, are we doing, is this live, is this being broadcast live? This is 100% live. Everything we say is going out on the air. Oh, okay, well, great, man. Okay, great. Well, well, I tell you what, I was about to, uh, I was about to knock on Scotty Too Hotty, but I guess I shouldn't do that. <laughs> Since it's going out loud. I, hey, I tell you what, uh, one person that I will never knock, and that is my, uh, 400 pound boost right there, Rikishi. You know, me and him, uh, just got through, just got through reuniting, um, in Nashville, Tennessee for a big show over there. Me and him are going to be Speaking teaming up, uh, October 7th. In Arkansas, matter of fact, we're going to team up October 7th, and then we're going to uh, team up again October 8th uh, for a big show on Batesville, Arkansas. So uh, you never know. We might, be, we might get uh, too cool back together. Well, this is a beautiful thing. And I tell you what, we got a couple more surprises who just came on the line. Before I introduce the person that you just so illustriously spoke of, let me also point out that none other than one of our favorite female wrestlers has just called in. Ladies and gentlemen, well, please welcome... April Hunter back to the show. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> hey, April, what's going on, girl? <laughs> oh, lots. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. You know, I'm, I'm still, you know, you know, I'm, I'm doing good in the wrestling, but I've still got a party. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wouldn't be here if you didn't party. Exactly. Hey, and you wouldn't believe it. I am actually in studio right now. Cutting a CD. I've already done. Uh, I've already uh, produced six songs, and uh, I'm gonna. Once I get ten songs done, I'm gonna release a CD. Yo, yo, you guys remember? Uh, I know. I know you guys know who Handsome Jimmy Vane is, right? Of course. Oh, yeah. Handsome Jimmy Vane. Well, his son. His son, believe it or not, owns a uh, owns a uh, record label down in Tampa, Florida. And uh, as soon as I get the CD done, I'm gonna sign with that record label, and I'm gonna get it out there to the masses. I hope you guys, you guys, yeah. <laughs> when, when, when yeah. you hear me sing, <laughs> when, you, when you hear me sing, I'm going to let you I'm not as good a singer as I am a wrestler, so don't be expecting too much. <laughs> Sorry, Brian, when, when you get it done, you got to give us some copies for the station so we can do some giveaways, let people hear your music. Oh, I'll do that. Hey, I got, I'm going to have to send you guys one because I got a song that is, uh, uh, it's going to sweep the nation. It's called You Ain't Nothing But a Jabroni. <laughs> oh, I look forward oh, yeah. to that. So what's April? April, what have you been doing? Where, where are you at? Uh, I'm in Tampa, actually. I live down here now. You're in Tampa. I'm in oh, Tampa. Okay. Yeah. What's going so on down there with the? Birthday. Instead of a birthday, yeah. I'm having a birth month this month, so I've just been well partying. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> okay, and now speaking of birthdays and partying, that is the perfect line to bring the other gentleman on the line. It's your oos and mine. Rikishi, are you there? Grandmaster Sexy, what's going on, April? Nice to hear you on Shoot Radio. 
Damn, it's like a party here. It's like a party here on, on Shoot Radio. Yeah, baby, yeah. Who's got the party supplies? What's up? <laughs> well, actually, we're well, for we... orgy, but still. <laughs> I have to leave. <laughs> April, April, how you think? You know, it's been a long time. I know. How are you? And we've been busy with this territory late, you know, and, of course, pushing it on Twitter here and there, but it's good to hear everybody online, and I appreciate you guys stopping by, uh, showing some love here on Shoot uh, Radio. Happy anniversary, my friend. Uh, we definitely appreciate it. It's Should been a finish. great year, and especially since we started doing things with the Territory League, having you guys all come in, Shoot Finish Radio is just going through the roof. Mm. Man, we got so much going on. We got Brian Christopher. Doing, are you, did you say you're doing an album, dude? Well, I am cutting me an album. I swear, a CD. Oh. Now, an album, yeah. uh, albums back in the, uh, albums, what you call it, back in the 70s and 80s, when old Jerry the King Lawler was, was cutting them. I'm doing, I'm cutting a CD, baby. It's a CD. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. I can't wait to hear that one, man. <laughs> you're going to love it. I'll give you, I'll give you some shout outs. Are we all yes, going to sing you guys a happy birthday since it's your anniversary? Yeah, we might as well. Let's do it right now. Uh-oh. <laughs> you want it? <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, hold on now. Hold on. We got to sing happy birthday. Yeah, we got, we got, we're going to do it. We're going to do it here for Shoot, uh, shoot Radio. Happy birthday, Jill. <laughs> Somebody, oh, do, you lead up, do you lead off, man? You, you the singer now. You couldn't have them. Yeah. All right, y'all ready? Y'all ready? All right, let me get some... Right, y'all be quiet now. You ready? Let me get my voice. Right, come on. Are right, you ready? Here we go. Happy birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Shoot Radio. Happy birthday to you. You. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And we definitely that, that was horrible. What in the world? <laughs> is this real life? That, that, is this real life? Yeah, that, that's going to sell some platinum. That's going to sell some platinum records. <laughs> yeah. All right, fellas. Well, I got to get up here and finish cutting my CD. I'm going to see you October the seventh and eighth. All right, baby. I'll see you up there in Arkansas. Let's let's put it down. All right, gorgeous Glenn. Be easy, brother. See you, April. Love you now. All right, thanks. All right, well, hey, that that's one. Now, it, it, this is definitely going to be an interesting night on Shoot Finish. We just got sang to by three of some of the most premier wrestlers in the history of the business. My I man mean, Glenn getting it done. Yeah, you know, I, I can I can handle being called Glenn. You know, it's not that big a deal to me. It, it starts the G. He got the G right. <laughs> 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 oh, I thought well, I thought Mad Dog was Glenn. <laughs> oh, he was Glenn by talking to him. But April, your birthday. I was going to bring that up myself, but you guys talked all about it. Uh, yeah. Well, what are we what are we talking about here? We're not talking about like age, right? <laughs> no, not age. Your 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 birthday. I mean, hey, twenty two is nothing. Twenty two is nothing to be ashamed of. There you go. Good save. <laughs> <laughs> I try. Now, the only thing I was going to say is, like, a lot of people, you know, you know, around the, you know, the business and things usually have some, you know, favorite projects, you know, like uh, Stacey Carter does things for Animal Rescue, and for her birthday, she wants to do, you know, have people donate to Animal Rescue. Is there anything that, you know, the fans could do for you for your birthday, as opposed to, like, maybe sending you everything that you deserve? Maybe, like, making a donation in your name somewhere? Um... I honestly, I haven't even thought that far. I kind of just started celebrating it like two weeks ago, and I never really thought to set up anything. I, I do some charity work on the side, so I didn't even actually didn't even occur to me to be honest with you. Um, yeah, so <laughs> no, there's there's I guess the April Hunter charity they can send me something, and I'll just pass it along. Yep. See, there you go. And of course. <laughs> Of course, and I'm not. I'm not saying people shouldn't go to your Amazon wish list and get your stuff on there. I, you know, far be it. That's yeah, not what I meant exactly. at all. <laughs> they, they can search me on Amazon, and I do have a little wish list. There's not a whole lot on there since I don't actually. I really don't like gifts. I know it sounds weird, but I'd rather just uh, use the gift cards when I actually need them, because I end up actually using them for other things, or sometimes giving them away or donating them. So it comes in handy. 
Definitely. It's like, because I just keep noticing that people send you stuff anonymously. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like you're always trying to, yeah, it's like you're always trying to figure out. It's like, okay, whoever sent me this, thank you. Can you identify yourself? <laughs> I know, I know. No, I, I do. I do appreciate that, though. And usually they'll step forward. It's, it's just somebody screwed up the, uh, the sender receipt. Because most people, if they're going to take the time and effort to send something, they really do want to be recognized for it. So it's usually just human error right there. But, yeah. Yeah, I understand that. So, I mean, what have you got coming up? Anything uh, for people to come out and see you? Uh, well, here's the thing, right? Since I've moved to Tampa, I have actually barely done any appearances. Um, for some reason, because I'm not living in Louisville or Philadelphia, people don't want to – the economy's bad, and no one wants to fork out really for, uh, you know, flight – and hotel anymore, especially with so many girls off of TV recently, they have more than enough to choose from. So I've adapted, and uh, I've got two Shimmer custom wrestling shoots coming up right here in Tampa on the 27th of September and then October 4th, where all the girls from Shimmer come down here, and we do the wrestling matches that the fans book. So that's my next two things that I have available. And then I'm also doing... uh, um, I just opened up a Clips for Sale site, I guess it's called, Clips for Sale. That's a little bit more fetishy and adult, but it's clipsforsale.com slash 316.14. You have to be over 18 for that one. And, of course, my own page, ablehunter.com. I'm doing a lot more with that now, too. Since I'm not on the road as much, I can pay more attention to it. Yeah. And, and just to let you know, I am, re- I am a wrestling fan in our chat room. Uh, remember the first time you were on the show... Mark James actually just broke out with the how hot you were. Well, I am a wrestling fan in our chat room, just did the exact same thing that Mark did, except he typed it out. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, mean, Mark, aren't you going to say something? Uh, I've just been listening, and I've been enjoying the the singing and and, um, joking and everything else. (laughs) But uh, it's great that. Wow, it was just completely unexpected. Especially have all three of you guys on at the same time is is pretty cool. But uh, yeah, April comes on, and and uh, I didn't even get to say how hot she was because there was so much going on at the time. So uh, I'm glad I hit it for me. I appreciate it. What's that? I feel free to say it now. (laughs) I always say, you know, think you're beautiful. So yeah. She wants to hear it the same way you said it the first time. Come on. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Come on, dude. Seriously, it's my birthday. I'm getting another year older. Somebody needs to tell me I'm hot. You're, effing, you're fucking you're gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Thank you. April, <laughs> April, April, on, on a 1 to 10, you're about a 76. Oh, thank you. And I don't mean age, yeah, either. <laughs> No, I'm serious. So when you're in a business where, you know, it's basically it's very looks-based for us females more than the guys, you know, every year that goes by, you see your bookings, you know, getting thinner and thinner. It really affects you mentally sometimes. So believe me. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just feel like I'm the strange one out of everybody because nobody ever believes me, but I, I just enjoy the conversations I have talking to you about politics and stuff like that. And everybody's just like, oh, yeah, sure, you talk to her about politics. No, I believe you. <laughs> well, you I better. Do. You're the person who talks back to me. <laughs> Speaking of that, I mean, what do you think about what, what's going on so far in, you know, in, in the early stages of the next election? Um, gosh, you know, I... I see the okay, man loses think, again. Yeah, no, I, I think it's like a 50-50 right here as far as who may get elected or who may not get elected. Um... But just, I'm trying not to pay as much attention as normal because it drives me crazy. But I think Obama has screwed up so badly that we might actually get a Republican in. However, I think the Republicans running right now are so batshit crazy that even conservatives might be afraid to vote for them. So that, I mean, it really could go either way right now, in my opinion. I don't think he's done anything at all, nothing to make anyone want to keep him in. He's just a little bit familiar, unless you count Don't Ask, Don't Tell, which I don't because it, quite honestly, only benefits a handful of people. 
Yeah, it's pr- absolutely true. See, so this, he's, this, this, he's not why done anything him. for anybody. The health care was a disaster. What he did pass was awful, and it's being repealed. I mean, the job situation, I don't blame that on him. I personally saw that happening a long time ago with, with the Bush administration. He did inherit a lot of problems, but he's also taken the fall for not fixing them quick enough. Uh, we're still in wars, so financially things aren't any better. Again, I do think he inherited a lot of that, but nothing's being done. So uh, more could be done. If, if Bush were in there and Bush were a liberal, he would have put his foot down a lot sooner and overridden things and signed things. And, you know, like him or not, he had balls. Obama does not. Yeah. I mean, that's the one thing is like when we talked about it before the, the, the gentleman is even elected, um, uh, my biggest fear was that he was going to be wishy-washy and wouldn't do a thing that he claimed he was going to do. And I hate, well, to, I hate to be in the position to have been right because I wanted to be wrong so be- so much. No, you're right. And I, I personally don't care one way or another what's Republican, what's Democratic. I really don't. I really, I'm very, I'm socially liberal. I'm very fiscally conservative. And as far as I'm seeing this country now, we're becoming socially conservative and fiscally liberal. And that is exactly where we do not need to be. Oh, I agree completely. Now, I've got somebody um, in the chat room just mentioned the name, Ron Paul. Yeah, um, I do like Ron Paul. I, I, I don't know if he's the least that shit crazy out of all of them, I suppose. And Mitt, Ron, Mitt Romney has actually done a lot of decent things for Massachusetts. I don't know why he's not sitting up on a mountaintop shouting about what he's done for health care in Massachusetts, but it's like one of the healthiest states in the United States, and everybody has health insurance there, and there's nobody being denied. So um, I know that goes against what Republicans feel is right, but personally, when you look at the record and you see how many people are benefiting from that, I would be bragging about it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's to his credit, but that's, you know, you know me in healthcare. I think it's a, it's a right, not an option. But um, I don't know. I, I think it'll, it's between Ron Paul and Mitt Romney, I guess. Yeah, that, that's definitely going to be an, an interesting, you know, what it comes down to to see what happens. And uh, I, I'm, I'm just not enthused by the whole thing. A lot of people seem to be the same way. But I'll tell you, um, April, fantastic as always. Thank you for coming on for our anniversary show. You are like the person everybody <laughs> wanted to see to hear from tonight. We got it. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me on. I really appreciate it, and happy anniversary. Thank you so much, and you have a good evening. And just remember, people still wouldn't be listening if you guys weren't cool as crap. <laughs> That's true. Cool as shit. <laughs> but you must be doing something right. Guys, somebody said we're doing something right. Oh. <laughs> I believe it. Uh, we figured out something right. There. Yeah, it's about time we're doing something right. <laughs> yeah. Somebody might vote for you instead of against the other person, right? <laughs> Have a good one. Thank you. All right. Thank good you, night. April. Bye. <laughs> See ya. Okay. This, uh, I always love talking to April Hunter, and I know the people in the chat room are like, politics? I'm like, yeah, politics. You know, th- she is you know, a pro wrestler. Therefore, what she has to say counts. It counts as a pro wrestler talking. I mean, am I wrong there, Mark James, Joey Image? No, you're definitely right. And I, I just shut up because she'll, she'll leave me in the dust when it comes to politics. So when she comes on, I just kind of get quiet and listen and try and learn something. <laughs> but anyway, Matt Denton, I, you've been sitting there patiently. You got ran over by Grandmaster Sexy. You got ran over by April Hunter. You got ran over by Rikishi. How you doing? There is no Matt Denton, only gorgeous Greg. Uh, gorgeous Glenn, was it? Gorgeous Glenn. Was it? Glenn. Yes, yes, there's only <laughs> gorgeous Glenn. Yeah. Yeah, you can, have, you can have the name Gorgeous Glenn. It's yours now. You should, you should go hop in to the chat room and not just Glenn Dent and make it CM Gorgeous Glenn Dent. It's, it's got to happen. Hey, I'm calling for Glenn. Who's this? Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and the first thing he said was, "Hey, who's got the party favors?" <laughs> yes, I I did notice that. 
you know, and I just got to send it out. You know, thanks, huge thanks to Junior Fatu to Rikishi for for arranging that surprise. It caught me flat footed. I wasn't expecting that phone call whatsoever. I, I still thought it was George South. I swear to God. Call me flat. <laughs> it chested. sounded like George. Yeah. It, it really did. It sounded like George South. As soon as he came on and got some of his name wrong, I was like, "Oh, is that George South?" What? <laughs> I thought it was Larry Merchant. <laughs> Yeah. What? Well, George doesn't sing like that, so it definitely wasn't him. And uh, I don't know. I really hope he does send some uh, send some CDs to you guys, so you can use them for some giveaways or, or something like that. For the <laughs> I would love the to give that away. That are listening. Yeah, but I mean, what what of that news? I mean, it, it's like basically we just got yet another territory league exclusive, another team on the way from Memphis. Oh, yeah. oh my God, from Memphis! Look, and he still idea about the mafia. Yeah, when's the BW twenty four seven team starting up, man? This is going. This is getting a bit. You know, guys are guys are stealing our thunder, man. Me, Wicked, Mark, uh, Sugar. Sugar. We, we, I know we need one more guy, but we'll we'll, we'll be fine. We'll find somebody. Well, I'm hoping that Chip Day. I'm hoping that uh, Do or Die Chip Day wins the uh, NWA World Title against Adam Pierce this Saturday, and we could gladly accept him to have the NWA World Champion on our team. Chip Day will do it. Uh, that would be pretty right? sweet. We need now, a lucha, right? Yeah, we've been talking about the, who we could get as lucha. You know, I was, you know, jokingly referring to getting karma, but you keep telling me he's on the shelf. No, yeah. he actually Go wrestled last weekend. Oh, he did. Karma, karma came back last weekend and wrestled against the uh, Prince of Puerto Rico, and then they got jumped, and he actually ended up wrestling against um, uh, a couple other guys. Well, the tag champions, the Alfro. Uh, last weekend, so yeah, Karma's back in the states for a little bit. Power, power, power Pro is that company that Power Pro is that company that shut down and then started running shows again and hasn't booked me yet, right? No, it is the uh, it is the company that shut down and only did the fair shows that we've already been paid for. And promised <laughs> to do, I know. Uh, before we shut down, I actually so, was. I, I actually, I'm sure you remember this. I actually was booked for those, and I couldn't. Uh, couldn't get off work for my day job, and I was not happy to miss those. Hey, guys, yeah. in the chat room, did you notice that we have two people volunteering to be our lucha? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to have to pass on uh, Mike the Kid and uh, Stan Grubb, sorry. Can unless, Mitch could be your lucha? unless they just don't get... I, hey, I've done a lucha match. I know, you used to be Cruiserweight Champion at one point, believe yes. it or not. I was cruiserweight well, champion, but that was several years ago. I did a lucha match like six months ago, and um, that, I was disqualified. That was like for... years ago and a few hundred pounds ago. No, the it lucha match. I'm, I, I'm thinking. Oh my too. god! <laughs> it's it um, you know, we got Sugar who works Shikara, who does lucha constantly, but he also has a tag team partner there, uh, being Dasher Hatfield. All uh, right, throwback. Who wears a hood? He wears a mask, so I guess he could be considered Lucha also. So why not bring those guys along? Hey, anything could happen. But the only thing that needs to happen in order for us is to have a territory league team is we got to get everybody to LA to go to the domain in Sun Valley, California, and be there all at one time. That's all we need. Once you're there, once you, we show them what the PW twenty four seven team could do, there is no way they wouldn't allow us into that territory league. Yeah, let, let's get a little more specific on what you actually have to do to get in the territory league. Let's not make it sound that easy, though. Yeah. Oh yeah, just show up with a couple of random guys and uh, a real skinny guy with a mask on, and we'll hey. put you in. <laughs> <laughs> so well, once you once you, once you said the big guys. Once you said skinny guy with a mask, I, I'm, I guess I'm out for the mask gimmick then. Yeah, just just showing up worked for Scotty Matthews. Dang. Well, my, th my thing is, is I'm bigger than half the people on the Territory League roster, and I'm a manager. <laughs> you know what, though? It would be would be great, I mean, because I know you wouldn't you know, want to go head-to-head -head against Caesar Black, but eyes on of the Templars manager eyes, I think that would be a heck of a, a meeting. With the Wicked Nemesis versus KPIs. Dude, hold on now. Just because I respect Caesar Black doesn't mean that when they, and now he knows the same thing. When the bell rings, I'll kick up with my size 15 foot down your throat. We can be friends and have a drink and, you know, smoke some green afterwards. But when that bell rings, I'm, put, uh, I'm putting the pedal to the metal. I don't give a crap. Even my brother, Ryan, Ryan Bishop, I fought him. I lost in 
27 seconds, but you know what? That's, we were scheduled to wrestle, and uh, we, we, I got my ass kicked. That's, a, that's the business. I don't give a crap. If you're scared and if, and if you want to have friends in this business, get a dog. Yeah, don't see, but I wasn't referring wrestling. to it. I wasn't referring to being, you know, so friendly you're not going to do anything. I'm just saying as far as a meeting of the type of managerial process, both oh, you and no. Caesar. I'll go against anybody, Greg. Both you and Caesar Black. I don't respect Caesar Black, but, man, forget that. Uh-uh. Yeah. PW247, the Atlantic City, whatever we're going to be called since everybody keeps stealing our names. You know, what AC Connection. We got this. The AC connection. It sounds like somebody coming out to fix my air conditioner. <laughs> we, that, that, that's what AC. It doesn't have to be a Linux city. It could be the air conditioner connection. Yeah, we all come out in hazmat AC. suits and stuff. <laughs> you know, I did see a funny shirt that I want. It says uh, Homeland Security, and it had a bunch of Navajo Indians on it. I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> it, it's, it, it's funny and ironic at the same time. Dude, we could totally be like the, the the Atlantic City PSA and just beat the crap out of everybody and then pat them down. <laughs> You'd be the TSA and like give everybody their body cavity search? No, I, well, I said, well, I combined PSA and TSA, you know. The more you know. Do, 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 do. That's when the rainbow comes out. Aww. But I mean, they have some cool names like the Reno City Scum. I mean, that, that's a cool name. And also notice that half the scum members have Bohawks. So that would be kind of a clash. Yeah, that that's putting it lightly. It's like because, uh, you know, uh, my ho- my mohawk's bigger than theirs, but you know I'd probably have to slick it back. Being as I'm from Jersey, man, you know what I'm saying, man? That's the worst Jersey accent ever. I'm sorry, I apologize, Joey. That's so bad, dude. That didn't sound anything like Jersey. <laughs> well, anyway, on that note, gentlemen, it is just about time to head out for the top of the hour break and everything else. I just want to say a quick hello to the newest person to join the chat room. Hey, Nick Anthony, welcome to the show. Yeah, ni- ni- nice to see you, brother. Yeah, ha- have, you know, ha- have your people call our people. We'll do lunch. And on that note, we'll be back in just a couple minutes. You're listening to Shoot Finish only yes, on are. PW247radio.com, Wrestling Radio, Evolve. Evolve. <laughs> news on the hour, within the hour, and when it breaks, where legends and fans come together. PW247radio.com. I'm Nathan Lane. Now, according to the Connecticut Post, Linda McMahon will officially announce her plans to run for the United States Senate September 20th. That's next Tuesday. In other news, WWE will be having a short Raw tour in Japan on November 30th and December 1st. Also, WWE have applied to register a trademark for WWE Network. Well, the WWE SmackDown taping in Dallas, Texas for October 11th is advertising John Cena and Alberto Del Rio. This is the day before the Raw brand begins their Mexican tour. In other news, former WWE and TNA star Matt Hardy claimed that he was framed. Quote, for the first time in my life, I was framed, Hardy wrote on his Twitter page on Monday of this week. A zero, zero, and zero. I'm truly appalled, he says. This will not go down without a fight. I've got a bullseye on my head. Hardy didn't say what, in fact, he is referring to, but we have learned from our friends at ProWrestling.net that Hardy has been arrested again for DWI. That confirmed with police officials in Moore County, North Carolina. In other news, WWE Hall of Famer Roddy Piper stated on his Twitter page that he underwent successful neck surgery on Monday. 
He stated that the surgery took six and a half hours and he is scheduled to be hospitalized for 10 days. Quote, when I can walk better, going to the kids' cancer ward. Piper noted, bravest people in the world. Meanwhile, WWE star Triple H was asked in a Miami Herald interview whether SmackDown could move to Tuesday nights. Quote, I'm sure if you ask Sci-Fi, they would say, yes, Triple H said. Quote, I think that's entirely on the board. The beautiful thing about WWE is we truly are a fluid product because we're live. And we can do it from just about anywhere. We can move things around and switch things around, he continues. And it's what makes us such a viable partner to people and networks like USA and Sci-Fi. Well, the news has been brought to you by the Cold Pepper Pond Brokers. Audio, TV, stereo tools, musical instruments, buy estates, cash for anything of value, including gold, boats, ATVs, buy and sell pot. Cold Pepper Pond Brokers in Cold Pepper, Virginia. Call them now, 540-829-7296. That's 540-829-7296. So you're up to date on the latest professional wrestling news here on the first professional wrestling radio station from coast to coast and around the world on PW247radio.com. I'm Nathan Lane, Wrestling Radio, Evolve. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention for just a moment. Here on PW247 Radio, we have always said that actions speak louder than words. That being said, show your support for your favorite independent promotion with your money by purchasing their internet pay-per-views. To do so, refer to the link to Go Fight Live at the lower right side of this page for any and all internet pay-per-view purchases. Thank you. Whether it be WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor, the Independent Circuit, or anything in between, myself, Mike the Kid, and Stan Grubb have got it for you. So tune in to PW247 Radio every Sunday night at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific, as we invite you to come with us, step between the ropes, and enter this very ring. Looking to make an impact for your promotion, business, or gimmick to the pro wrestling community on the only 24-hour online pro wrestling radio station? Let Pro Wrestling 24-7 make you a main event. PW 24-7 has space available for your company to advertise around the world with our global fan base and loyal wrestling fans from New Zealand to California. Your commercial spot will be heard worldwide. With our competitive rates, you can have our personalities from around the wrestling industry advertising your business on PW 24-7. PW 24-7 also has web banner advertising and sponsorships to make your sponsorship a success. For more information, contact nick.anthony at pw247radio.com. PW247 Wrestling Radio, Evolve. And I'll sit in it to make my heart burn go away. How does sitting in a recliner help a heartburn? Well, I can't lay down in my bed when I have the heartburn. I try to sit up and I use the recliner. But that's the same thing. You're laying down. If, if your recliner is stuck no, the in the recliner, recliner doesn't position. go down. I know. You're laying down, basically, right? No, I'm sitting up. The recliner the foot, doesn't recline the anymore. I told you, it broke. Okay, so the ottoman part of the recliner is up, right? <laughs> yeah, the legs go up, but the back doesn't go down anymore. What the hell? Something what in the electrical do? circuits broke. A recliner is not electrical. one of electrical ones that's about 40 years old. Oh, okay. <laughs> just asking, man. I, don't, I just don't understand. Tune in to Bad Blood, Nick Anthony, Aaron Kendrick, Tuesday, 6 p.m. Pacific, here on PW247Radio.com. Hey. Hey, you. Yeah. Yeah, you. 10 p.m. Eastern, Friday nights, PW247Radio.com. Tweet talking. The British bomber, Matt Denton. Your favorite professional wrestler and your Italian hero, Joey Image. Again. Every Friday night, PW247Radio.com. Tweet talking. Miss it, I kick your ass.
All right, we are back. Hour two of shoot finish, getting ready to get things moving on. And as a, over the break, we are sitting here discussing what we should talk about next. I mean, should we talk about the past of shoot finish? Yeah, we could do that, but you know, we've been there and done that. You know, we we could talk about the future. Yeah, been there and done that. But then we decided we'd probably say, "Caller, you're on the air. Who we got talking to us?" Well, uh, I just got a tweet from someone by the name of Joey Image suggested maybe I should call in, so I figured, what the heck, I'm not doing anything uh, right now, I'll call in. Hey, man, how are you, man? I'm good, I'm good, uh, you know. <laughs> I figured, what the heck, you know, we haven't talked uh, face-to-face, well, this isn't face-to-face in a long time, so I figured I'd call and say hello. <laughs> awesome, man, we are, well, this is our weekly uh, live radio show, we're on our one-year anniversary show right now, and we just had a bunch of other dudes call in, so I'm just sending out random tweets, and I thought I'm going to hit up Jimmy and see if he wants to talk for a little bit. So what's going on, man? How's things in your world? Oh, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, you know, just sitting back here, relaxing a little bit, trying to figure out what the hell Sam Malone is doing in Vegas, uh, trying to be a CSI guy, but uh, other than that, uh, just sitting back enjoying life, man. Excellent. Well, that sounds like Excellent. a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, yeah I, I just, you know, uh, I'm a big TV guy, so, you know, it was uh, it was watching the Leafs, uh, Maple Leafs play a little preseason hockey against the Flyers earlier, and now uh, uh, watching, a little, like I said, a little CSI, trying to figure it out, and not a big fan of, uh, of uh, I, I prefer Lawrence Fishburne, but anyways, uh, we're we're here to talk wrestling, aren't we? <laughs> well, I mean, we could we could talk TV too because you know I actually actually haven't watched CSI ever since Fishburne took over. I, I was just wondering what the new changes were bringing. Maybe you could tell me. <laughs> well, no, no, I, I kind of like I said, I like I, li- I kind of like Lawrence Fishburne because he was kind of he seemed a little more serious, and Ted Danson kind of makes it seem like Sam Malone is trying to uh, be a crime scene investigator. So, uh, not a big fan. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. Wicked Nemesis, sounded like you wanted to say something, yeah, brother. Yeah, uh, you know, you were just talking about about preseason hockey, Mr. Corderas. What do you think about the Jets getting a, getting into a fight 37 seconds into their first preseason game, their first game in like 20 something years in Winnipeg? Hey, old time hockey, you know, Joe Blake, Eddie Shore. What can I, what can I say? I, I guess I, I, you know, it, I don't really have a problem with fighting in hockey as long as it's done for the right reasons i mean back in the day it was done to pretty much police you know uh, ongoing shenanigans on the ice now it just seems like somebody wants to pick a fight just to to to, to prove that they can i uh, i think there's a place for it but like i said just in in the right circumstances i guess going back to winnipeg you want to entertain the fans and uh, put a good product on the ice well, and you know like they say when whenever the fight breaks out on the ice what do people do? They don't. I don't think people are turning the channel and and looking for something else. People are watching, so um, you know. Uh, I don't. I, I really don't mind it too much. And then, of course, all these bruisers actually dying now and committing suicide. You know, some people say it's from all the head trauma they received. Uh, how do you feel about you know somebody that's been in the wrestling business? You've seen guys with concussions. You know, you've seen that side. Uh, how do you feel about the concussions in the NFL, the NHL, and wrestling now? Because I mean, you've been right there for some of them. Yeah, um, I don't know. Uh, see, not being from the medical field, I don't know how much effect the concussions actually have on that sort of. You know, um, I think there's something else there. I think there's an underlying. You know. Uh, uh, emotional condition or, or for lack of a better term like some kind of depression or something and and unfortunately what happens uh, it i guess we're seeing it in hockey recently and it's happened in wrestling in the past is um guys turn to certain medications to help get them through difficult times and and the problem i think is that it, you know it like anything else uh that's not good for you they tend to abuse it and that's where the problem lies and and i don't know if it's so much the the effects of the concussions themselves or just a combination of things so uh i wish i had a better answer for you i just i really don't know what to make of it to tell you the truth uh you know i i we we've lost some good people in in recent years and and i wish i could you know put a finger on why you know it's just a terrible tragedy you got to agree there. Mark James, you had something. Yeah, hey, Jimmy, how are you doing tonight? Good, man, how are you? 
I'm doing very well. Uh, so I, I usually talk to you on Mondays during Raw or, uh, or one of these random wrestling shows that we're, we're talking back and forth about something. Um, right. and, and I love the fact that you're not scared to be opinionated about what's actually going on in the business nowadays. Um, right. What What do you think is, and it, I'm going both sides here because I don't want you to think I'm cornering you, but what do you think is the best thing about the business today and what do you think is the worst thing about the business today? The worst Ooh. is Joey Image. Besides uh, <laughs> Joey Image, I mean, no, he has to, he has, mean, to re- he has to read my shit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny because um, I think part of the worst thing that that that's happening in the business today, and this is like a twofold answer. I think when you look at someone like the the WWE, I think the worst thing that's happening right now is a, with the exception of a few people. They're not allowing the guys to be themselves. I mean, what they're doing is they're strictly, uh, you know, they're handling their, for example, their promos, like uh, very scripted and very, you know, stick to the script and not letting guys experiment and, and, and for lack of a better term, fail. Because the only way to learn, the best way to learn, I always found, was to fail. And, and they don't get the opportunity to see what works and what doesn't work. It, and it's pretty much they're dictated to we're on the other side i think with the other guys in tna i think they're giving giving them a little bit too much freedom on the mic for example in promo work and not giving them direction and letting them go off uh with the again with the, the exception of a few guys like bully ray who's been phenomenal lately and stuff like that so i think uh i think the good things that i like what's going on now is i like the variety of different uh angles that are happening you, you take cm punk for example everybody's you know jumping on the punk bandwagon for dropping his pipe bombs recently and stuff like that but i like the fact that 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 scenario that angle with him and triple h and uh whoever else will be involved in that angle they're the only ones doing it as opposed to everybody on the roster trying to so-called you know break down the fourth wall and 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 you know be this controversial figure. I like the fact that they're the only ones doing it and everybody else is pretty much sticking to uh, uh, kayfabe, for lack of a better word. Makes if that makes sense, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I tend to ramble. As you yeah, it know. made made sense to me. Now, Matt Denton, when you said Uno, did that mean you had a question? No. I, I, think, it was just, I, I think it was just a smart-ass response to uh, me saying I had something for him. <laughs> pretty, sure, pretty sure that's what it was, but um, Mark and knows, and, Mark knows. and Jimmy, I, I don't know if you took me seriously the other night, but I, I definitely want to thank you for uh, reminding me that I have to be much more careful before I actually send tweets to uh, make sure all my information is correct. <laughs> I wish he would remind me of that sometimes. Yeah, I screwed up like last Sunday during the pay per view when Mark Henry won the title, and uh, it, I don't know, and I, I screwed up and put down. You know, finally the black champion and all that stuff. And oh, I, say, yeah, I, be, I corrected that too. Yeah, Mark. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah everybody yeah, and their I brother. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I so. was having fun though. That I, I oh no, no. I, see, I understand. To, to be honest with you, I, I I knew what you meant, but I was just having fun. I figured, okay, here's an opportunity for me to be a bit of a jerk. <laughs> yeah, no, you were fine. You, you didn't bother me a bit. It was the it was the other 180 assholes that. <laughs> <laughs> didn't have a clue what the hell I was talking about. Oh, Kevin, yeah. yeah. I think, what about Butch Reed? What about think... Bobo Brazil? Like, what, what the hell are you talking about? Like, Bobo Brazil? World Jesus. Heavyweight Champion, you dumbass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. It's, it's funny. It's, it, it, you know, the, the, that's one of the crazy things about Twitter, and, and I learned it quickly, but then at times I, 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 I find myself getting caught up with some, some of the guys who are trolling out there looking for... You know, just to get a, a reaction from you, and and I have a, a very weird sense of humor sometimes. So, you know, I will try to engage them, and just to get them riled up. And uh, sometimes it backfires. So I've decided, you know what? When I notice people are trolling, just leave it alone because they're just looking for attention. So, you know. Yeah. It makes no, it, I, it, pisses, I, it pisses them off more when you ignore them. Definitely, yeah. definitely. But no, I just wanted to make sure. They're, that you knew there was no hard feel. I knew you were just messing around, so oh, yeah. it didn't bother yeah. me a bit. But I appreciate <laughs> you uh, definitely calling me out. Hey, because if, if nobody does, I'll keep doing dumb shit. So. I think that's just... <laughs> well, well, that, James just called me an asshole. 
<laughs> in that case, I think Jimmy needs to call me out a little bit more too, because I, I, uh, I have I have diarrhea of the fingers when I get on Twitter, and uh, you guys all know that. Yeah, yeah. No, you, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, though. I mean, like the the one thing about Twitter too is people should be themselves instead of trying to be a, a character. That's one of the things I I don't like about Twitter. Uh, as far as the wrestling business goes, when people use it to to further angles, like you know what, save that for television. That's what yeah. television's for, and that drives me like nuts. That, you know, pe- people want to see the real you. Like there's guys out there, um, um, for example, Dolph Ziggler uh, on Twitter, who is just he's being himself. You know, and that's cool. Don't be, don't be, don't be the character Dolph Ziggler. Be uh, you know, just be you and have fun with it. I think Xavier Woods is one of those guys that falls under somebody that is himself on Twitter. I mean, he's one of the few guys that goes out there and talks about nerdy stuff, you know, goes back and forth with, with Mad Dog Matt Denton about video games. But, uh, Mr. Corderas, I have to ask you, though, uh, who is the one person out there right now that you thoroughly enjoy watching in all of wrestling? Wow. Uh, first of all, well, please call me Jim uh, or Jimmy or whatever, yeah. Uh, the Mister thing kind of freaks me out. Sorry. <laughs> um, um, wow. The, who do I enjoy Mrs. watching right now? To be honest with you, uh, obviously I'm enjoying Punk's work right now. I mean, like uh, I always, I always did enjoy it, but right now he's on a different level, and and I'm really enjoying that. Um, I'm enjoying. I mentioned Dolph Ziggler. I think he's he's got so much upside. To him, I just think that they if they need to sooner rather than later kind of split him away from Vicky and let him do his own thing and be on his own. Um, wow. You, you guys put me on the spot, but it's all right. That's cool. Um, well, you know what? I'm enjoying Mark Henry stuff right now, and I've known Mark since he first came in to the WWF at the time, and the stuff he's doing right now, in my opinion, like is the best stuff he's done ever. Since he's been there, I mean, he's fantastic. The stuff he's doing is fantastic. His mic work has been really, really good. And and you know what? You watch him and you believe him, and that's that's the whole thing, you know. So uh, you know, hats off to him. Congrats to Mark. Okay, Matt, you you finally found thought of something. It's your turn. Okay, um, just out of sheer curiosity, was it a surprise to you to hear that Mike Kyoto got suspended for wellness policy? And was it always the way that? referees would get tested along with the talent or was it something that came out just uh just recently no no they were always part of the the wellness program it it, it also included them and and referees are always tested was i surprised with uh with mike uh the thing that surprised me is i didn't realize that spray tanning toner stuff was uh, against the, uh, the wellness program so that, that kind of freaked me out but other than that, not 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 really. <laughs> okay, I want to make sure I get this question. We have a question in the chat room, and uh, he just basically want to know. He is a, a a young ref in the business, and he just wanted to know if you have any advice for a young referee who's still learning. Um, best advice I can give is to probably, um, other than watch tapes of other other officials i mean everybody's got their own style everybody's a little bit different like my my i'm a little bit different from what someone like let's say earl hebner would do or tim white or but but the one thing i think we all have in common um is we treat every match as if it were a shoot and 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 the big thing is not to try and get yourself over because the whole idea of the referee is to enhance the match and to help get the match over as opposed to you know trying to get yourself over the talent in the ring the two guys the four guys or however many guys are wrestling in the match those are the guys that are supposed to be the focal point and the only time the referee should be noticed is either during the finish or if he's needed for a spot let's say other than other than that you know just you know you know learn and uh, you know by by watching other people and even and and learn from the the guys you're in the ring with Uh, ask always go to them and ask them what they want you to do Watch you know, Tommy Young that tapes. Would be my best. Yeah, definitely. Oh man, I was a huge Tommy Young fan. Oh, me too. Me too. Because we were lu- we were so lucky up here in Toronto. We got so much different wrestling on television when I was younger. We got everything from Mid Atlantic to uh, AWA wrestling. We, of course, WWF and of course Maple Leaf wrestling, which was big up here. 
We got stuff from Montreal. We got Calgary Stampede. It was ridiculous. I mean, my weekends, uh, they couldn't get me out of the house, which was kind of pissed off my parents a little bit. But, you know, hey, what can you do? Go ahead, Matt. Sure. Um, just, uh, again, out of curiosity, was there any heat against Jack Doan for getting so many of those uh, gimmick diva matches where he used to get rolled over, uh, that roll over <laughs> spot? <laughs> I, no, you know what? The, the reason he's in there is because, he, you know, he's a veteran and he could help them along, too. And uh, and I don't think many people were upset about it. I think they were more, we were more hot at Timmy White because he used to get all the matches with the Godfather and the hose. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think that was a little, you know, we were a little, hey, man, why is Timmy doing all these matches? Can't we get one? You know, show us a little love there, you know. And he got to dance with him and stuff. So, yeah, uh, I think that was a little more heat than, <laughs> than Jack, that's for sure. Hey, Jimmy, I got a real quick uh, question and a comment. Um, first of all, you mentioned a, a, sec a second ago, treat every match as if it's a shoot. And something that drives me insane. I've been working indies for a little bit over 11 years now. Something that drives me insane that I see at least once on every show is where you know, or well, you not specifically, but you, the ref, know when the finish is, so you know that you obviously know when it's not. And if I'm down and I forget to kick out, man, I hate when they just don't count. You know, a, a, a ref, a ref will count one, two, and I forget to kick out, and they'll just say no, it's two count. Like, man. You know, if I screw up and I forget to kick out or, or something happens or whatever, it's my fault, man. I, it drives me insane. And I don't think a lot of refs really realize this because, uh, like I said, I see it at least once every show. You know, if, 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 if I forget to kick out, just keep counting. It's my own fault. It's my screw up. Do you, I mean, how do you kind of feel about that? Um, I, I'm, I have to agree with you. I mean, if, if it's a situation where, where you know, the, the talent or, or whoever is being pinned forgets to kick out, Sometimes, um, if if you think about it, if the referee can think about it and kind of give you a friendly reminder as he's counting uh, by uh, just quickly <laughs> saying kick, sometimes that helps. But if if they don't, if they don't, and and they don't realize and they don't kick out, if you if the referee holds up, that absolutely kills yes everything you've done up to that point. It, it doesn't matter how good the match was up to that point. As soon as that slowed down last you know, count is not made because uh, for whatever reason it happens to be and the referee slows it and makes it look really bad, that just killed the whole thing. So, you know, I, we, we were always told if they don't kick, if the boys don't kick out, count. You will right. get in trouble for it. And the same thing goes. The same thing goes for other for other finishes. I mean, I've been in two matches in my career where I was supposed to win titles, and for some reason, one of them I forgot to. One of them I forgot to get back in the ring, so I ended up getting counted out. I don't know how the hell that happened. And and another one, another one was a chair spot, and uh, stupid me didn't like look to see where the ref was first, and he was looking right at me, and I did it anyway, and then turned around and saw the ref looking at me, so he had no choice but to DQ me. But uh, it just drives me crazy when when that happens. But um, my my real question was going to be: Have you had any contact with TNA, or have they contacted you? Um, uh, not really. I mean, like uh, I'm friendly with a few guys down there. Obviously, um, Earl and Brian Ebner, I still keep some contact with uh, every once in a while. But not really any any oh, you know overtures about going down there or anything like that. Just uh, you know. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's it's funny, you know. After all these years uh, being home for a while, I kind of like, I kind of like being home now. It's it's you know, I'm I'm enjoying it, you know. Yeah, I'm you know because I'm doing the, uh, you know, I've got the uh, the now it's a podcast. We got the podcast, the live streaming on Monday nights with Aftermath Radio, and I'm doing some stuff with the Score Television up here in Canada, uh, the Aftermath Television Show, and and some stuff some analysts work with the fight network up here so I'm, I'm keeping busy in the broadcast field and trying to actually dip my toes in the acting field who knows i you know i consider myself a bit of a ham i don't know if i can get into that field but you know i'll give it a shot see what happens see where it goes um jimmy one last thing i think we're gonna have to get a break soon but um one last thing i'd love to ask you uh, I know we, we talk WWE a lot, we talk TNA a lot. Uh, I haven't seen uh, any tweets from you about any actual like indie feds. Do you, are there any indie feds that you're interested in or that you have a chance to watch, such as the Dragon Gate USA or Ring of Honor or something like that? 
or um, or do you just not really pay much attention to them? No, I do when I can. I mean, it, it's difficult um, being up in Canada. We don't get uh, the exposure that uh, to to ROH and and uh, and Chikira and stuff like that that I would like to. And uh, you know, I, I do watch their pay per views because of the, you know, Go Fight Live. You know, you can watch them there on iPay per view and stuff like that. But now with uh, with ROH getting their their television deal, we'll be able to I'll be able to watch it here in Toronto through our Buffalo affiliates. Also, awesome. now I'll be able to regularly watch ROH, which I'm really looking forward to because I think they 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 offer a unique product different from what everybody else is offering, and I'm I'm excited about that. Plus, I've uh, um, you know on a personal level, Michael Elgin is. Uh, is a friend of mine who who lives not too far from where I am, and he's uh, and he's uh, starting to make a name for himself in ROH. So I'm looking forward to watching him a little more on uh, on their television program. And as far as local indies here in in Toronto, you know we have um, Max Pro Wrestling, which is uh, 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 you know they run shows here in Ontario along with Squared Circle Training, which is uh, the training school that uh, I'm actually I I ran a ref camp there twice uh so far which which i'm also friends with those guys so i'm trying to keep in touch with that stuff uh, but obviously not as much as i'd like to so um hopefully in the future of it especially with roh you know being on television right now that i'm going to be able to watch weekly i'll definitely be watching more cool yeah. go ahead Matt. Uh, yeah I, i've just got one more question you mentioned earlier about um if, if a wrestler forgets to kick out, you're supposed to keep on counting, right? Mm-hmm. Wasn't there a situation in ECW, uh, or WWE ECW in 2007 where a referee did just that and got tons of heat? I think he got fired. What, did he get fired? I think it was like in a Miz match, a Miz tag team match. The Miz was supposed to come in and break up the pinfall. He didn't do it, so the ref kept on counting and got into trouble for it. Well, I think that was a, a, a different situation because... Um, there was confusion when it happened because it looked like, like I, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not choosing sides here for, but I remember what you're talking about, and, I, and it looked like the referee when he counted, he didn't wasn't sure whether he counted three and and didn't. The only way to make it work is if someone doesn't kick out is you have to definitely be be sure about your count. Like it was definitely a three. If he'd have said no, at least if he'd have got up and said no, it wasn't a three count. You know, and emphatically said it wasn't. It, it may have worked, and or if he got up and said yes, that was three. You know, and, and just been confident. But the problem was he looked confused also, and looked like kind of like a deer in the headlights, and looked like he wasn't sure about what what to do in that situation, and it came off on television that way where it looked like he was confused and not sure what call to make and I think that's where they had a problem with it okay thank you yeah no absolutely problem. absolutely fantastic but right now unfortunately we need to head out for our mid-hour break so ladies and gentlemen we'll be back in just a couple minutes here on shoot finish you're listening on pw247radio.com we are wrestling radio evolve WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor, the independent circuit, or anything in between. Myself, Mike the Kid, and Stan Grubb have got it for you. So tune in to PW247 Radio every Sunday night at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific, as we invite you to come with us, step between the ropes, and enter this very ring. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy! Wake up! 
Little Jimmy, wake up. Wake up, little Jimmy, wake up. We both been sound asleep. Wake up, little Jimmy, and weep. Raw is over, it's 8 o'clock, and troops got big time heat. Wake up, little Jimmy. Wake up, little Jimmy. Well, what we gonna tell the others? What we gonna tell them, son? What you gonna tell your friends when they say, See, that sucks! Wake up, little Jimmy. Wake up, little Jimmy. Well, I told you, boy, our truth was changing his way. Well, Jimmy, my son, looks like truth got screwed again. Wake up, little Jimmy. Wake up, little Jimmy. He got okie doke. Yeah. Wake up, little Jimmy. Wake up. Wake up, little Jimmy. Wake up. Raw wasn't so hot. Seen I got a huge pop. Well, I fell asleep less than halfway through, and I still know Raw's plot. Wake up, little Jimmy. Wake up, little Jimmy. Well, what we gonna tell the others? What we gonna tell them, son? What we gonna tell your friends when they say, See, that sucks! Wake up, little Jimmy. Wake up, little Jimmy. Nick Anthony, Aaron Kendrick, Bad Blood, Tuesday, 6 p.m. Pacific on PW24. Hey, everyone. Daniel Korea here. And what are you doing on Tuesday night, say, around 8 p.m. Pacific time? If you're not busy, you might as well check out my show, The Gorilla Position. Every week... I will bring you the results from Raw, SmackDown, and Impact Wrestling. I'll even play a little bit of audio so you can hear for yourself what happened on the shows. So be sure you keep it locked on PW247Radio.com where you can hear me on the Gorilla Position every Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Pacific time. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention for just a moment. Here on PW247Radio, we have always said that actions speak louder than words. That being said... Show your support for your favorite independent promotion with your money by purchasing their internet pay-per-views. To do so, refer to the link to Go Fight Live at the lower right side of this page for any and all internet pay-per-view purchases. Thank you. Right, we are back for the final half hour of our anniversary show on Shoot Finish. I'm telling you, it has already been one heck of a night. People calling in left and right. People I never even expected to hear from, let alone, you know, tweeting and saying, hey, you know, you should call in. And they call in like two seconds later. That was an amazing thing you did there, Joey. Hey, what can I say, man? I have my connections. None of them, <laughs> none of them helped me get any work, but... I can at least get a phone call. I can at least get a phone call. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, you know, let's actually talk some recent wrestling. We might as well, you know, do it because everybody, you know, heard what we said about TNA and that's as far as we're probably gonna go with that, to be completely honest. But uh we had Night of Champions. What did you guys, you know, think overall? Um just give it a, 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 a rating. I'll start with you, Joey Image. Give it a rating, you know, one through ten. What did you think of Night of Champions? Uh Six, and I'm being generous. Six? Okay, yeah. generous six. Right. Wicked Nemesis. Hmm. I give it possibly uh, an eight, a seven point nine or an eight. You know, uh, on a wow. scale of one to a hundred, I'd give it an eighty-four, and then raw, I'd give it eighty-three. It just between the cluster of a finish. 
not really making sense. I mean, I'd like to see where it goes. Uh, I thought that Beth Phoenix and and Kelly Kelly actually put on a decent match. Uh, the Flying Oreos against Miz and R Truth were eh. That match could have been better. Uh, I thought Cody Rhodes and Ted DiBiase put on a good match. I love Mark Henry and Randy Orton's finish. Him pulling him up, shaking his head no, then throwing him off. John Cena didn't didn't need the title, uh, even though when John Cena is on top, the rest of the business makes a lot of money. But uh, and then Triple H, you know, it was yeah, maybe an eight. Hey, Wicked, you mentioned uh, Cody Rhodes. Did you see the the picture of what Randy Orton did to him on SmackDown last night? No, I did not. Oh my God! Covered in blood, blood all over the mat outside the thing. I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was hard way or if it was worked or whatever. But uh, I know there was some kind of brawl between him and Orton. I know that they're going in that direction, um, him and Orton. Um, but man, the picture is just brutal to look at. Yeah, I might have to look that up myself. All right, let's go next as far as the score goes. How about you, Matt Denton? Um, I'm gonna give it a seven point five. 7.5? Alright, sounds good. Mark James. Uh, I refused to watch it, basically. Well, not really refused. I just didn't. I, I didn't care enough about it to watch it. Let's put it that way. Okay. Well, that, 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 that's an acceptable answer. It works perfectly fine for me. Now, as, as far as you know, things go on my end of things, I think I have to go in the 6.5 to 7 range myself. But the one thing that Wicked Nemesis just said about, you know, Kelly Kelly and Beth Phoenix having a decent match, you know, you, you must be watching that from some different angle than I was watching it, because I was watching, you know, Kelly Kelly run the ropes worse than, you know, Rima Faki did on Tough Enough. Uh, I mean, you probably were watching the same, the uh, different one, because what I saw is from a worker's standpoint, and what Kelly Kelly had done up and to there, it goes to show the old adage you are only as good as your opponent. And that yeah. was a good match. The only thing, the only problem I had is the fact she didn't sell after the beatdown she took. But if you look at it from a worker's standpoint, that was how you want a model, not somebody that's not a wrestler, but a model to work a match and go over on somebody, or I'm sorry, win over somebody that is actually a wrestler. That's how you do it. And Kelly Kelly needs to sell more. Speaking of okay. running the... Speaking of, sorry to cut you off, Greg. Uh, speaking of running the ropes, uh, did you guys notice Monday night that Hugh Jackman ran in, hit the ropes, and did it better than Kelly Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> um, he really I, did. I will, neither con- I will neither confirm nor deny that I, I saw that and laughed loudly. <laughs> All right, so other people noticed that it wasn't just me. No, but, uh, but the thing is. I, I understand exactly what Wicked Nemesis is saying uh, about, you know, it, that's exactly how the match should go. That, I guess maybe I was just watching it from t- too far, too much of a, you know, I want to see, you know, something technical out of her. But because they're trying to build the Divas of Doom up to be that, the Divas of Doom, but yet they keep having these fluke wins. So how is that building up the Divas you know, the, the they need to be building Kelly Kelly into a credible champion so that when they defeat her, it was something good. And instead, they keep giving her fluke wins. I mean, am I wrong there? You're absolutely correct. Nope. They're, they're, they're building them up as, like you said, like the female Legion of Doom, and then they're, they're losing everything, every match. Yeah, and it's, it's not losing to after a hard-fought match, which I thought they'd be doing to build up the division. No, it's, you know, the girls who go up against them always get this fluke win out of the, you know, they do this, and they do this, they're getting beat up, all of a sudden, boom, there's the win out of nowhere. And it, it's getting annoying. Well, as we talked about on Midnight Wrestling last night, uh, or I mean, I'm sorry, on Monday night last night, on Monday night, uh, Joey and I, and he can back me up on this, they lost the first time they put them together. There was a loss. Then there was a win, which Alicia Fox was pinned. And then it's been all losses since then. They need to have the Divas of Doom win to gain momentum. Because if not, they're going to give Kelly Kelly heat from the fans because people want to see the Divas of Doom win. And it's okay to eke out a victory every once in a while. But there's no way that they should that, that Beth should have lost back-to-back nights to Kelly Kelly. I'm sorry. You know what, Wicked, there was, one, there was one thing that happened on Raw that we didn't mention that I completely forgot about um, that kind of annoys me now that I think about it. Uh, 
Alberto Del Rio did a promo or did a backstage deal with Triple H, and Triple H was like, "I'll give you a title shot right now if you want." And he said, "No, no, 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 no. I need rest. I can't. I, you know, I, I wrestled last night. Uh, I need rest." They go to commercial break. They come back, and Alberto Del Rio has a match. I thought he needed rest, and he beats John Morrison in 45 seconds. I thought he needed rest. He couldn't. He couldn't. So if you're going to wrestle anyway, if you're okay to wrestle anyway, take a title shot, man. It's a title shot. I Joey, thought that actually, make, that did, didn't make any sense to me. That. We did half-ass cover that because I said, well, we could talk about the backstage promo, but let's don't. I said it really quick and then went on. But you are exactly right, and that's where Jin Jin Michelle saying that Morrison needs a job squad shirt is exactly right. Until he brings back the Shaman of Sexy, he's going to continue to lose. This parquet, farquet crap that he does well, that, is not cut, I'm sorry to say. That, that didn't really have anything to do with what I was talking about. I mean, it could have been anybody that he, that he. It could have been anybody that he beat. But my point is, he did a promo specifically saying, "I can't uh, tonight." Right, I can't tonight. I need rest. I just had a rough match. Blah blah blah. And then they go to a commercial break, and three minutes later, he wrestles anyway, and he beat his opponent in forty seconds. So if you can, if you can wrestle anyway, why you know take a title shot? It's a title shot. Always take. I mean, if this is one hundred percent legit, always take a title match, man. I don't understand. You know that that's that's TNA booking right there. Yep. No, no, it's Mate. not though. You know what? You know what surprises me is from the two heels, the two guys that were heel constantly. You guys did not understand what was going on with that promo and the match. Well, yeah, like like any like a good heel, like a good heel, he backed out. I mean, I understand that, but at the same time, yes, it's a title match. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna accept it. Okay, I'm gonna accept an offer every time. Yeah, oh, okay. Unless there's a reason not to, right? So why why would he accept a rematch the next night and use his rematch clause when he doesn't have to when he could do it a night of champions and win it sneakily? You know what I'm saying? Because he could have a win because the because, because it was an, the next one is. because because it was an offer from from the boss, not necessarily using my if I want to, if I want to invoke my rematch clause, that's my choice. If they offer it to me, that's then I would I would assume it doesn't it doesn't uh, affect the, the rematch clause. Yeah, but that, that's too much assumption, you know what I'm saying? But but then the other thing is, this gives them time to formulate a plan of how to win back the title. At, I'm sorry, it was Hell in a Cell, not our champions, but either way. <laughs> and then he goes out there and just dominates a guy who's, you know, he's, he's tired, he's beat up from the, the match last night with Cena. It was a knockdown, dragout match. So he went in there and kicked the jobber's ass, uh, or John Morrison, same difference. And... Ooh. um you know, and and went through and and showed his dominance to get him a little more mem- momentum as a character, as a heel, because that's something I could see a an asshole douchebag type heel do. You know what I'm saying? Well, no, I'm not going to fight the guy that could possibly kick my ass. I'm going to pick on this other guy over here that I know I could fuck up in about forty, you know, forty five seconds, and then I'll wait to fight the guy that I think might be able to kick my ass because then I'll have a plan to go after him, and that's good heel mentality. Uh, last time I checked. Am I wrong? But now he ends up fighting in a three-way instead of it being one-on-one. Right. Yes, where he can sit back and watch CM Punk and John Cena beat the shit out of each other. In a hell in a cell, you can't run in a hell in a cell. I could see if you had had some escape, but it's a hell in a cell. There's, that there's was my that was my point. That was my point about it, and uh, and I, I guess I was under the same assumption as Joey was was too. Is it was given to him? He didn't invoke his uh, rematch clause. So yeah, I mean, that's, no, I that's what they were talking about, though. That's what they were talking about because he was bitching about him having to use his rematch clause for the hell in a cell, and Hunter said that, you know, "Well, I'll give it to you now if you want." You know what I'm saying? So now, was, now it makes it was, sense, but I missed that part in the first uh, when it was on the other night. But now that makes sense. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 there's always a way to hide in, in any three-way. There's always a way to hide for a little bit and let, let the two other guys beat the shit out of each other. It's CM Punk and John Cena. They're going to be interested in what each other are doing. You know, they're, they're kissing each other's asses now on television as it is. You know, but what do you think about page. the Hell in a Cell being a three-way instead of it being a one-on-one? Uh, I think it's just going to be as, as bad as a normal three-way, man. It's not like they're going to do anything different. You know, they're, they're, there's no blood. There's no point in having the damn hell in a cell. People are still in, like interfering in the case matches regardless. So what the hell's the difference? You know, just give them a regular fucking match and get it over with. And I'm wrong. It's not a three-way. It's a triple threat. A three-way is where there's elimination. We covered this on Midnight Wrestling, but still, it's a triple threat. Sorry. All right. Sorry. Well, same shit. Either way. 
<laughs> no, it's not. You of all people, you of all people yeah. know. There's always a way. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, it, it's it's six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. It's still three guys in the ring fighting. So, I mean, the, the only difference is it's, it's first fall is the finish, and, and that's it. So, you know, you could pin anybody. And, and then they'll get into the whole old adage that, well, CM Punk can turn Alberto Del Rio and win the title or, or vice versa, and who gives a shit? Because <laughs> anyway, we all know Cena's going to go over again, so it doesn't really. That's matter. so stupid. I don't like the fact that the Intercontinental Championship and the U.S. Heavyweight Championship were not defended that night. Uh, Cody Rhodes ends up getting his match kicked out of the way by Sin Cara versus Sin Cara, and then you have uh, and what was, what I said, Joey? Was it under two minutes that uh, Zack Ryder beat? Yeah, something like beat, that. Beat Oh, I had the exact time written down, damn it. But anyways, uh, it, it was not, I mean, you just squashed with the help of Hugh Jackman, and Hugh Jackman gave away the fact that it was Zack Ryder by going and getting the sign out. I'd rather have the Muppets there than have Hugh Jackman there, because the Muppets at least are, are TV-14, because the Muppets were all druggies. We've had this conversation on Twitter for those of you that actually watched the Muppets show. We're not talking yeah. about Sesame Street. But the fact that Hugh Jackman's dumbass would go and get, I don't care if they're, and w- Ziggler played it perfectly. I don't care who it is when they started chanting, we want, we want Zach. Don't say anything. That's why you have somebody as an actor screw something up. By yeah, going and how much of a dumbass, I- I'm sorry, how much of a dumbass is he? There's the one friggin' sign that he goes out to get is the one that says... It Zach buries Ryder's his own character. He's been, right. yeah, he yes. buried himself. What a I guy. said, yeah, I said that on Monday night, too. <laughs> I said that on Monday night, Mark, too, on the on the on the, uh, the raw, you know, the the midnight wrestling show. He he's known for for playing Wolverine, <laughs> and he grabs that sign that buries his own character. What the, the hell was the point of that? Unless he couldn't he read it. it. I don't think he knows his right. Then and less than. Right, that's what I think too. I don't think that made any sense to him at all. <laughs> <laughs> if it didn't say Bub, he can't read it. Oh, that's that's terrible. I know that's a nerd joke. <laughs> nerd! <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. I love it. And, and the thing is, all of us laughing. It's like, you know, look at all these people. Everybody's sitting here, you know, in the wrestling business, and all of us, you know, talking nerd jokes. And meanwhile, everybody in the chat room is probably going, my God, Wicked Nemesis is a nerd? <laughs> yes, I'm an athletic nerd. For God's sakes, I wear a Caesar death mask to the ring. That should tell everybody right there, I'm a nerd. Yeah, makes perfect sense to me. Now, now, see what? Here's the one thing we, we talked a little bit, you know, with, with Jimmy about, um, you know, Mark Henry and everything else. Now, my question is, why now is Mark Henry gelling as you know a mega, you know, a mega strongman heel when every time they have tried it in the past, it failed miserably? Because he's not hurt. Do you think it's as simple as that? Just because he's not yeah. hurt now? Yeah, because as a strong man, and as Jim Diva, you know, Sharon Garrett, shoot, finish his mascot, will tell you, if you don't work out, it doesn't matter how strong you are. I mean, he was going to doing all these different things. Remember when he was pushing cars? and I mean, it was always something Mark Henry was getting hurt. The best thing they could have had him do was take out Big Show and Kane, and then Kozlov. Not Alex Kozlov, Vladimir Kozlov. And, uh, well, actually, he is now using Alex Kozlov, but still... Uh, it, it was just great timing, you know. It, took, it sometimes it takes fifteen years. Unfortunately, he should have had it before, but still, I mean, th- it was great, and they built it up superbly. That is how you build up a monster. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a, it's about damn time then that he he wasn't hurt and everything finally gelled, because the man from the very beginning, you know, the world's strongest man, should have been trouncing everybody from the from day one. It never happened. Yeah, they, not, they constantly gave him a stupid freaking gimmick. You yeah, well, that's, that's not to but, say, though, Mark. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed some of the stupid gimmicks. I loved it when he was sexual chocolate at point at different points. I loved it when he was dieting with D'Lo Brown, and then when he looked at the screen and said, man, can't a brother get some sauce? I thought that stuff was great. It actually showed some personality that he was great. But as far as a monster, it's what he should have been all along. I'll agree with you there. I mean, it's it's something. The this run has been the best thing I've ever seen out of Mark, and and I think it's honestly, and, and not saying it's him being himself, but it's him being a more aggressive side of himself. And and I don't I don't understand how WWE hasn't gotten that yet. 
every major player, every major character, any money-making uh, persona that they've had in the wrestling business over the last 30-some-odd years has been the guys being themselves, or at least a little more aggressive version of themselves, and it sells and it makes money instead of all these dumbass, idiotic freaking characters that they keep trying to give to these guys. You know, it's, they just have never stepped fully away, you know, and we've had this conversation before. The WWE has never stepped fully away from wanting to present the cartoon characters they had in the 80s. They want to bring it back. That much is evident. They keep, they, they keep really pushing bringing back the cartoon characters, with the latest one now being Sin Cara. I mean, could it be any more blatant? He's not a luchador. He is a comic book character. I mean, does anybody disagree? No. What, what the hell is the deal with that, anyway? I mean, I understand the, the two Sin Caras and why they're there and all that stuff, and one's Funiko and one's Mystico, and I, I really don't care enough to, to know uh, why, why the hell are they fighting each other, and what, the, what happened to Cody the other night? Like, seriously, I, I really want to know. Did he just slide under the ring? Did he just say, screw it, I'm leaving, because there's two of the same guy on Oh, <laughs> he just disappeared in the thin air. Yeah, my assumption yeah, really. is he left in disgust, to be honestly. That's just my pure assumption. I think he what? disappeared in smoke and mirrors. The one thing I'm going to say is Cody, instead of giving out the bags, he's got to do something. That giving out the bags thing is getting over. You know what he, he should do? as a heel. You know what he, he should do? do if, if, if he wants to be an even bigger heel, at least what I would do is I would demand that fans give the bags back after my match is over. Just to be an yes. even bigger dick. Yeah. I agree. Makes perfect sense to me. I mean, if you're you're trying to, to get over as a heel, what's the what best thing to do? Take something away from somebody. Yeah, right, pizza. Billy? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Anybody who has been listening to us already understands that joke, so there's no need to go any further. But, uh, you know, one last thing from, from Night of Champions, because we're running out of time. Did... Did anybody else really enjoy the Fatal 4-Away match? Not because it was a good match, but just because they enjoyed seeing Dolph Ziggler run in and steal the win? Yeah, me, because I predicted he'd win. Yeah, it's just the style of his winning. I, I like the fact that he's been playing that type of character, and they, they continue to play that type of character. I mean, hopefully they're not going to try to turn him into the, uh, the next ultimate opportunist, but it, it could happen. I mean, what do you guys think? No, it was smart. Good, man. No, I'm just saying it was smart, and it furthers his uh, little budding feud with Jack Swagger, doesn't it? Because he stole the win from Jack Swagger. What doesn't, what doesn't make sense is that the night afterwards, with Jack Swagger doing nothing but bribing Vicky with a, a an opportunity to see Hugh Jackman, who she was already in the ring with once, right? Yeah. <laughs> He gets part of our uh, new managerial stable. That makes no sense. Oh, oh, see, I, I, speaking of not making any sense, I am noticing in our own internal chat room that Wicked Nemesis was a little bit confused about the whole taking things away joke. Joey, it's been a while since you told it. Go ahead and tell it in the last couple of minutes we have here before we say our goodbyes. Oh, God. All right, making a long story short, I took pizza from a two year old girl. Um, because I'm a bad guy, I took a slice of pizza from a two-year-old girl at a show a few months ago, I ate the slice of pizza, or I took a bite of the slice of pizza, uh, and then gave it back, what was left of it, and the result was, uh, the girl, both of the girl's parents and her aunt, um, who was the mother's sister, all trying to jump the guardrail to get to me to kill me, screaming at me through the entire match, calling me an asshole, a piece of shit, calling me faggot, which I, apparently that makes me, you know, eating pizza makes me a bundle of sticks or a cigarette. Um, and uh, <laughs> and then at the end of the match, when, as I was making my exit from the from the uh, from the arena area to go to the back, they swung at me a couple times. And luckily, somebody during the match in the back noticed this and sent security out there. So whoever ended up getting hit was one of the security guys because I ducked a punch. Um, so that's really make a long story short the uh, the pizza story. And I, I haven't been back. I haven't coincidentally I haven't been asked back to that town since. And that was uh, I think in May. I think they're just afraid to get killed. 
That's what I was afraid of, too, that night. But on, on the end of the Joey image, yes, I stole pizza from a two-year-old girl <laughs> story. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to the end of our first anniversary show. Just to get things rolling on our goodbyes, in honor of his coming back for the first time in months, I'm going to start it with the Master of Malice, Mark James. Uh, well, again, guys, thanks for having me. It was a blast to be back on the show for uh, for even just for tonight, and uh, hopefully, I can do it again uh, eventually. <laughs> but um, you know, follow me on Twitter at Real Mark James to hear a lot more of my bullshit and uh, hear hear me rant on God knows what else. And uh, that's pretty much everything that's going on with me lately. All right, Matt Denton. Uh, you can follow me at the Matt Denton on Twitter. You can follow me on Tumblr at fuckmattdenton.tk. And you can also find me here on PW247 every Friday night with Joey Image, pending Joey Image having another thing pop out in midair. Just being no, like, I, yeah, I, t- I declined this weekend. Uh, something did come up Friday night, but I declined. For you. If it was you getting laid, you're a better man than me. <laughs> no, it, it, no it, it, it was strip bar related, though. Yeah, well, that's good. Wicked Nemesis, you're up. Well, guys, you can find me hanging with Troy Davis. Uh, oh, wait. Is that too soon? Too soon? Too soon? Holy guys, Christ. look me up on social media. <laughs> it's very and soon. Just like somebody, <laughs> you know, just like somebody said. Today, it's rest in peace, Troy Davis, and tomorrow it's going to be what hoes like and what do you masturbate to. So, like, I give a crap. The trending topics. Anyways, anyways, you can find me on social media, Wicked Nemesis, Funny or Die, YouTube, VO, Daily Motion, uh, Blogspot, uh, FunnyorDie.com, anywhere there's social media I am besides MySpace. And go out and support guys like joey image and mark james because i will tell you guys a secret mark james is is really a really nice guy and so is joey image but mark james for what it's worth actually saved an ethiopian by giving 10 cents a day as a kid and that's why mark james is is right now that's why his that's why his gear looks like uh something from john cena's closet because that's what he does he sends his money to ethiopians leave the guy alone and the reason why joey image ate is because he's hungry the man does 15 shows just for pw 24 7 alone leave these guys alone go out and support them and on that note joey image (laughs) oh my god that was tremendous Oh, uh, Mark, I'm hungry too, man. Can you send me a, a 15, 20 cents? Uh, it's on the way, brother. Uh, I'll send a PayPal. Excellent. Yeah, great. They'll take half of it for PayPal fees. I'll end up getting four <laughs> pennies. Uh, everybody can follow me at, tw- I mean, on Twitter at Joey Image. Um, check me out on joeyimage.com. And please send me your hate mail, joeyimage at gmail.com. And if you are in the Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut area, please check out, hit up uh, Stroudsburg High School in Pennsylvania this coming Sunday, 5 p.m. bell time, uh, for Extreme Hybrid Wrestling. I think it's their third or fourth show. I am in a three-way dance against Damian Destiny and Junior Soba, who I've both killed in the past several times. Um... And uh, I'm going to kill them again Sunday. So come down and witness me uh, kill people. Take care. And as far as it goes for Shoot Finish, it's really easy to find anything about Shoot Finish. It, Twitter, it's at Shoot Finish. Facebook, it's Shoot Finish. Google Plus, it's Shoot Finish. Heck, you can even go through the PW247Radio.com website and click on Shoot Finish to see ShootFinish.com. And with that finally out of the way, don't forget that tomorrow – is the premiere of Sports Access with Jerry Sorrentino. And also, again, another show with Three Way with Fire <laughs> and Ice. Uh, I thought you were going to say another show with Joey Image. I'm like, oh, God. I forgot to mention that. Yes, we will be debuting tomorrow night with uh, myself, Jerry, and James. And we will have our special guest will be Tony Atlas, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Do you have a fourth show? <laughs> I, I do now have a fourth show, yes. The Triple J the show. Guy, the guys that knows the guys, right? Man, I'm that guy that knows the guy that knows the guy, right? <laughs> I'm the guy behind the guy. <laughs> exactly. Seriously, you we have to rename this place. Yeah, exactly. Joey Image 24-7? Joey Image 24-7 radio.com. J-I 24-7. Next time we call you, answer the phone. 
Hey, I'm only. Uh, I was. I was busy last week. I forget what the hell I was doing, but I remember getting annoyed because you, you called like late. three that's, times. Uh, that's, you were on your way home. You tweeted it on my way home, so we called you. Oh, I don't remember. Well, if I didn't have my phone on me, I mean, if I didn't have my my Bluetooth on me, I wasn't going to answer while I was driving. Okay, and just to end okay, things off on a high note. <laughs> Sorry, just <laughs> just to <laughs> <just laughs> definitely <laughs> take lessons from you. Just so we can end this on a, hi- a high note. Tweet talking Friday. This very ring Sunday. Midnight wrestling on Monday. Bad blood and gorilla position on Tuesdays. Back here next Wednesday. Same place, same station for shoot finish. Ladies and gentlemen, first anniversary show is over. We are out of here. <laughs>